I would have, you know, I really wanted to make a cool, fun, funny, romantic, sexy fucking snake movie, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> and you have Robert Kurtzman and, you know. I'm... I know, right? I had a beautiful girl. I had Irfan Khan. I had, you know, I mean, I had, like, incredible talent. I had an amazing cinematographer. And I had the whole country of India, which is, you know, basically already art directed. You know, you can't make that up. Yeah, and And, uh, what was the problem with, like, my main thing is, I don't know what your relationship is with the producer at this point, but what what was the problem with the, it's not your fault that he doesn't know where to be and how to organize when uh, supposedly he's done it, and he took you as, I I would hope he would know your work. You're not the type that's going to just shoot a scene and let's go. And it's right. like he wanted a sci-fi channel director, but he could have hired one. <laughs> he could have hired one. Why would he hire you unless he just wanted your name? I just didn't understand what his his deal was. It's yeah, you Apple. know, I mean, I have tried to communicate with Govind, um, but he does not want to communicate with me. Um, I think that Govind is a, a lover of great cinema and wanted to um, make a great film. I also think that in the end, uh, the situation was not as prepared as it could have been. And, you know, I felt thrust into an entire different way of working than I was used to and tried to acclimate as well as possible. But, you know, he did hire me. And ultimately, the film I wrote and made was not what he wanted. So that's that's the sad part. Um, I don't think anybody in it or in the experience was villainous, but uh, it was easily the saddest thing that's ever happened to me. So you're you're saying basically it was a huge, I don't want to say misunderstanding, but you were just on totally different pages. What's weird is I didn't think we were on a different page uh, really at all until it was taken away from me. Um, mm sometimes personalities clash on a set and uh, some people are yellers. I'm not a yeller. Mm -hmm. Um, I handle my own panic and fear by admitting I'm panicked and feared, which tends to sort of relax me. And then I can, you know, seek help or make that whole feeling less powerful and get the job done still. Um, But that, you know, I mean, so when we clashed on set, um, I just sort of took that as how Govind worked as compared to how I work, and, and we were making our way through it. Um, I didn't realize uh, that I was not making the film he had hoped I would make until the end. Yeah, so, and, and again, I loved the experience. As uh, crazy as it was, I learned more about my life and what I do and about the world, you know, Mm-hmm. trying to make that movie than I may have ever learned. How did the whole documentary start? Was it, I want to cover my ass? So Oh, God. Because, <laughs> that, it, I'm not that I'm, smart, no. <laughs> it, it worked out like that, and it made, it almost seemed like, it reminded me of watching Rocky or something. It's like you keep oh, getting you're up awesome. down, <laughs> and you keep getting up, and your attitude was, I couldn't believe your attitude was as good as it was. Oh, thanks. I, um, you know, I mean, I know I'm lucky to have a job I love. And not only lucky to have a job I love, but really fucking lucky to have a job a lot of other people would love. So I'm not about to um, sit around whining about stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what, the way it all came about was uh, Govind and, and Penny, the filmmaker, actually had known each other for quite some time. And she was in India shooting something else. And he said, hey, would you be <clears throat> interested in shooting some behind the scenes? And maybe along with that, when Jen's working, you can help out with Sid, who's you know just trying to acclimate to India. And uh, she did that. And then she sort of, at a certain point, realized, you know, there's a lot more here to film than just some behind the scenes. And she asked, um, you know, if I'd mind if she, for the most part, had me wired and shot me 24 <laughs> seven. And, uh, I was so comfortable with Penny and I, you know, I thought everything was going to work out and 
uh, we'd have a film at the end and it would be interesting. And I, I continued to think that uh, as hard as it is to look at myself, you know, gaining 60 pounds, losing 60 pounds, mm-hmm. gaining 60 pounds, um, that I probably have as much to learn about myself as I do about other people. So this might help. And she was a good reality check. It was like, uh, you know, I could turn to her and say, did they, did that just happen? And she'd say, yes, it did. <laughs> I got it right here. <laughs> you know, is the entire crew barefoot? Yep, pretty much. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I give a lot of credit to both Penny and Govan for, you know, Penny for seeing the potential and for thinking I was interesting enough to shoot and Govan for letting her go ahead with it. And now was it, uh, I know it couldn't have been what you expected as far as their customs and making everything so difficult and they can't use their hand for this. And if you yeah. shoot here, you're going to get attacked. Yeah. And that was just, I, I can't imagine. Never a dull moment. Ever. Unbelievable. And then <laughs> I'm sure it was 150 degrees everywhere you went. and Everywhere, yeah. Just, uh, you know, hot, hot, hot. But the amazing thing was, I mean, and I think this is even in the doc, these are such nice people. Uh-huh. There's no intention in making things difficult. And they're so relaxed about it. You know, they'll yell a lot. But then they, it's like, you know, five minutes later, it's as if they haven't yelled and they expect everything to be fine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, at least for me in, you know, in Los Angeles, when someone yells, you know, that way, you may not speak to them again. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> um, so it's sort of a, um, it was, it was a, a fascinating thing. I mean, between the heat, the craziness of the differences in how things worked. I mean, and it's not that I wasn't willing to go, hey, willy-nilly. It's just that it was all essentially riding on me. And I was trying to develop a schedule with them so that I could know what was happening. And then once I realized that between light men striking and cyclones and just the nature of India itself, you can't really have a plan. And I never really knew one day to the next what was going to be happening. So I just, um, you know, I I had to try and celebrate that. And I, you know, again, I hope I made the best choices I could have made then. I probably would make a lot of them um, the same way. And others, with some hindsight, um, I, I don't know, but I, I cherish the experience. But it mm. was it was insane from the start. For that, sure. That was what really this confused me is how you couldn't get a schedule for anything and I would <laughs> I would have thought that's a producer's job to organize at least organize the people because it didn't look like you brought anybody really with you. No, we, we hired at the last minute very close to starting to shoot a script supervisor because I said you know, because they don't really do that in India as was evidenced in uh, one of their TV shows where a woman walked from her living room carrying her baby into the kitchen, and when she entered the kitchen, there was no baby in her arms. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's not as important to them uh, in the same ways as it is to us. And that's, you know, that's wonderful and spirited, too. I just had no idea. So, uh, you know, we really only brought uh, Kurtzman, and we brought a sound guy, Brad, from L.A., and we brought uh, Jessica, our script supervisor, who ultimately left the, the project. She was just too frustrated. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we started to train and uh, one of the Indian crew to do it, which is a whole other part of stuff we shot that, that uh, didn't make the final cut. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, it, of course it's the producer's job at least to um, secure the staff to do that. But if the staff don't know how to do that, the producer has other jobs aside from teaching the staff how to do that, and it was all just a mishmash. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, and then when the safety became a question, that's when I, oh. that's when I was like, it, it's very frustrating to watch. Yeah. It's right? very, you want to go there and start yelling at people yourself. Yeah, and, and you know, as, as evidenced, I think, in the documentary, yelling doesn't do anything. Yelling is sort of, uh, the, the, the finest way I think I was able to communicate was as calmly as possible and just suggesting that maybe more work could get done if everybody felt safer. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it never changed. I mean, you know, 
you know, for stunts and everything. They just don't, uh, you know, they don't fear death at all. Oh, my God. You know, so it just was mind-boggling to me where in the States, you want to do a stunt, you know, my God, you've got an entire hospital standing by. And you have it, 20 yeah, people was, lined it, up to jump exactly, over? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It was surreal. <laughs> but again, what else do you do except at a certain point, uh, giggle, because it was not within my ability to to change them. They've been doing this successfully. I mean, they make way more movies every year than we do, than anyone does. Oh, yeah, I know it's huge. I'm not so, into those movies, so I don't really understand them. I know they like to break out in song in the middle of the movie. Yeah, they love it. <laughs> so, you know, but and, I haven't and, seen and a lot. It's incredible, because I hadn't seen really any uh, until I went there, and I got kind of hooked. Um, but I, I, um, you know, they know what they're doing, but I just couldn't, I wasn't let in on the secret and I wish I'd, I'd had a little bit of a heads up or maybe it, maybe I don't, who knows? I mean, it all happened the way it happened and I'm grateful, uh, to Penny for seeing that, that, uh, she found something interesting in it because a lot of people seem to be coming up to me saying, I really appreciate the fact that, you know, anything that difficult is something you can survive. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, hey, I'm even lucky to have a crazy job, especially mm. today. And it's a crazy job doing something I love. So, you know, nobody ended up dead, thankfully. And I wish there had been a film I could have, you know, wanted to put my name on. But, you know, there it, wasn't. It's just going <laughs> to show all those, you know, Smithy directors that wanted their names off movies, they could just show somebody that and say, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I wish I could have taken my name off. I don't know why they left it on. I really don't. Other than then maybe they thought it would help sell the film. But I, like, that's I, what I thought. I just, uh, it, that just hurts my heart. And I know that's a sissy thing to say, but man, that fucking hurts my heart. It's like, you know, it, I still have not seen it, but all I know is that people who have seen it, who, knew what I was setting out to do and who were there said, just don't ever do that to yourself because it's it's not at all what you intended. It's, and it's got good-looking shots, and they're a little mixed up and confusing at times. The lamppost shot is awesome. There's, thanks. The chase scene is awesome. <laughs> I'm just hoping you shot the, the chase scene. I, I shot all that. I mean, oh, everything yeah. that's there, I shot. I just didn't get to put it together or color time it or mix it or score it or... You know, I had assembled a whole director's cut. I was about a week away from doing final things, and uh, they said, why don't you go home for a week, and I never saw it again. So there's no chance of ever seeing the good one? Uh, no. Yeah, that was, uh, the one DVD of that was snapped in half. And that's just an insult on top of that everything. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was the level of secrecy they wanted to any cut, and I also guess they just didn't want that happening i mean i wanted to respect the legend too i didn't want to make I, I wanted it to be funny you know i had plenty of humor in there mm -hmm. um but i wanted to make something beautiful and sexy and you know hey you got a woman who turns into a snake that's essentially a woman who turns into not just a, a sensual creature but a phallic looking creature yeah. you know i wanted all sorts of cool stuff going on in there but it was so much fun to be there even in the insanity, I just think that, you know, like when, when uh, Sid and I went to the uh, premiere in Toronto, neither of us had seen it, so I didn't know what Penny had assembled or what had made it and what hadn't. And, you know, I'm really glad she made the film she wanted to make because that's very clear to me. I mean, I worry that it looks like I'm getting upset for no reason sometimes or that I look like a maniac or, you know, and I, I think, oh, well, this isn't in there and that would have explained that or... Boy, it sure hates, looks like I hate litter bugs. <laughs> you know? Well, you know what? Like you said, you don't yell, so you have to do something or you're yeah. going to break down. I, I, I really, you know, but I do think it was an important lesson. You know what I mean? And it's, it's also the greatest home movies I'll ever have of my kid. I'm so glad that that footage exists of Sydney because she's, you know, almost 17 now and it's... Um, you know, it's so cute to see her with her little high squeaky voice, which no longer exists. And it's you know, it's like you went out. You instead of making the movie you want, you got a uh, a good film that you kind of started with your daughter. So it, it, I exactly. think exactly. Well. 
I yeah, I was talking that, to, to Sherilyn Finn the other day, and she said, I think that you went to India not to make hiss, but to make Despite the Gods. 